Today I'm reacting to extreme workouts to determine if the risk outweighs the reward. These clips kind of speak for themselves, so let's have some fun. <laughs> yeah, okay. Hold up. I am all for exploring the limits of what the body can do and exercising your creativity in the gym. I am well aware that everyone has different capacities and what serves one person may not serve another person. I am also well aware that there are many, many ways to target any muscle group, but this seems excessive. Impressive, but excessive. Today I'm going to challenge myself to give each of these workouts a fair shake. Keep notes as I weigh the risk and the reward of each exercise, and by the end of the video we'll all have something new to aspire to in the gym. When I grow up, I want to be like him. Or maybe we'll just not do what is seen here and remain safe instead. For the record, all of the exercises shown here are for entertainment purposes only and performed by professionals. The exercises should not be reproduced in any way. With that out of the way, let's proceed. So there's a few things going on here. Obviously, we have the chest and shoulders working up top to keep his body in place while he is hanging. In particular, the pectoral muscles and the lats are working over time to pull his arms downward to hold his body in place while he is hanging. It is a different position, but the same kind of action that is required to hold a front lever. Of course, this will also require some rhomboids to control scapular retraction as he depresses his shoulders down as well. And I am sure that his abdominals and his hip flexors are screaming as he resists the downward pull of the bike and maintains a 90 degree flexion angle at the hip. Yo, this is goofy as hell, but not gonna lie, this is super hard to pull off. It certainly takes strength and coordination to do this and not make it look like a dog's breakfast. Having said that, there is so much going on here that I'm not sure how effective it would be. Individually, there is benefit to each of these movements and I don't have a problem with any of them. However, adding these movements together doesn't simply add up the benefit. Some of the benefit is lost because none of the movements can be done optimally. Since you are concentrating on a variety of competing interests all at the same time, including hanging, maintenance of body position, and the cardiovascular aspect of cycling. If you wanted to work all of these different aspects of fitness, I would choose different exercises to do individually. In fact, I can't think of a time where I would ever counsel someone to do this combination of exercises together. Ever. Not to mention, this is reckless and dangerous behavior. Sorry. Great for social media laughs, but not at all safe in the gym. Obviously, he could fall from the rack, and since the bike is clipped to his feet, this could result in serious injury to his lower extremities, his upper extremities, his spine, or, have been forbid, his groin. <laughs> And were he lucky enough to escape a fracture, he still might suffer a muscle strain or tear of his chest wall, his lats, his abdominals, or his hip flexors. Were he to fall onto the bike with his body, he might also suffer internal injuries such as a perforated viscous or a liver or splenic laceration. It is hard to look cool for TikTok if you have to have a colostomy because you required abdominal surgery. Look over there, you can take a selfie in a hospital bed to get social media attention. Don't really want to get into it, but I'm fine. What up? First of all, I love the little disclaimer at the bottom that TikTok has put on the video. Participating in this activity could result in you or others getting hurt. I strongly agree. Like 10 out of 10 would not be recommended for the average gym goer. Again, there is a lot going on. Now, don't get me wrong. I love bar muscle ups and I believe that they are a great demonstration of upper body strength and coordination. And I don't even have a problem with weighted muscle ups. I think they raise the level of difficulty for an already challenging calisthenics movement. However, I think that the awkward shape of the bench dangling between the athlete's legs is a disaster waiting, <laughs> oh waiting to happen. Cringe, bro. Oh my God. Is he serious? As with the lever spin bike combo that we already saw, here he is working his pectoral muscles, lats, rhomboids, and core muscles. In addition, here he is also working his deltoids or shoulder muscles, biceps, triceps, trapezii, 
and the smaller flexor pronator muscles of the forearms. The muscle up combines pulling, pushing, and grip strength all into a single exercise. With the bench belted to his waist, there isn't much going on with his lower body. It is basically just along for the ride. But with the bench strapped in between his legs, there is potential for many of the same injuries already described for the lever spin bike. Of particular concern might be testicular trauma where he'd fall directly onto a hard part of the bench while it was between his legs. Such an injury might elicit an interesting conversation with his future wife when he tries to explain how he was rendered sterile after he had traumatic testicular rupture. See what had happened at first word. <laughs> as for the efficacy of this exercise, I would say that it remains effective overall, but not as effective as the strict bar muscle up would be. While the added weight of the bench provides extra resistance to overcome and necessitates more strength, its awkward shape and unpredictable movement detract from the efficacy of the muscle up movement itself. The athlete has to pay attention to how the bench is pulling his body around while he tries to do the movement, rather than focusing his attention on the movement itself. I can just imagine Matthias and his team sitting around a conference table spitballing ideas for the next million view TikTok. What about using a barbell to hit a baseball? Nah, too easy. Skydiving, but without a parachute. Eh. Instead, you'll flap your cardboard wings as frantically as possible to blast your arms, shoulders, and lats at the same time. Dude. Okay, okay, I've got it. Use an exercise mat to contain the blast from a grenade. Dude, that's the one. Okay, enough. I need something a little bit more tame. Lord almighty. All right, Mikey Maybeam. Not the most effective workout in the world, but you've got my attention. Can you show us something else? I think. He trades his ideas back and forth with Matthias. Nice. What's this one? A deadlift? All right. Good approach. Puny human. Okay. Not sure what's going on here. Okay. Okay. Hold up. What's going on? Well, where to start with this one? I saw the original broomstick challenge on TikTok and thought it was interesting to try. Don't tell me you can do it. <laughs> Fuck off. Right, I'm trying it now. <laughs> it's all in the hips, man. It's all in the hips. Ow! Girls are more flexible. Well, that's Come part on. of it. That's part of it. Please don't smack your head. The broomstick challenge is largely a mobility challenge and it is based on the difference between the position of the center of gravity in women versus its position in men. With the original challenge, it's supposed to be easier for women to get up from the floor while their hands are locked behind their back than it is for a man as a result of their lower center of gravity and better overall mobility. That's a whole lot of weight, a whole lot of weight. Oh man, his neck must be killing me. Oh. Wow, wow. But here, the athlete has taken the challenge to a new level by adding a strength component to the mix. This has raised the bar to another level. That's called motherfucking bars. See what I did there? Another level. You know nothing about that. By adding 225 pounds of weight above the center of gravity, he has actually changed the center of gravity to a higher point in his body, making this challenge infinitely harder since the body weight is now concentrated at a point that is farther away from the fulcrum of the lever, the hip joint. Muscle groups worked here can be organized by the phase of movement in which they are used. Initially, the focus is on the cervical muscle strength, abdominal strength, and hip mobility as the athlete moves himself into position. Using his head as a third leg upon which to brace himself, he contracts his core to shorten the length of his torso so that he can flex his hips to get his legs underneath himself in a position where he can start to get up. Then in the next phase, he activates his pectorals, his biceps, his glutei, and his spinal erectors as he pins the bar against his back and attempts to bring his back from a forward flexed position into an upright position. With the weight that he is moving, the strain on his glutes and low back muscles would be immense. 
Here, there is still some strain on his abdominals, but this decreases as he transitions to the erect position. In the next phase, the focus returns to the biceps and pectorals with assistance from the anterior deltoid muscles as he basically performs a reverse circus squat with the bar behind his back. In the final phase, as he stands up, he adds in the glutes, the hamstrings, and the quadriceps as he performs a step up zerker combo. No doubt about it, this is an all around full body exercise. Not saying that it is terribly effective, mind you, but definitely full body. Of course, whenever someone is lifting this amount of weight, there is always potential for injury. With this weighted variation, the injuries are primarily relegated to the moment where the weight is initially being lifted off the ground. At this moment, the low back and gluteal muscles are at risk. The key is to put it all in your groin and your back. Take your legs totally out of the equation. These muscles could be strained by the large weight combined with the awkward body position as he transitions from the tripod position to the erect position. Lift with your lower back in a jerking, twisting motion. Also at risk are the intervertebral discs of the lower lumbar spine as the athlete attempts to pick the weight up off the ground. In this position, there is considerable force on the posterior aspect of the discs as the lumbar spine is flexed forward while the weight is just starting to leave the ground. This would leave the lumbar discs susceptible to a disc protrusion or a disc herniation as a result. But hey, some bowel and bladder incontinence or and inability to feel your anus from saddle anesthesia are worth the weighted broomstick challenge world record. Am I right? Yeah. Holy crap. Okay, 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 that's enough, enough, enough. Jeez, wow. And he finishes it off with a spin. Get this man a medal. There's no way that he can follow that up. No. Wow, crap, that's ridiculous. There are so many things wrong here, so many things wrong. I don't wanna throw shade here because this exercise combo mashup monstrosity is super freaking hard. And you need to be really strong to pull this off. But man, is this a freaking disaster? Like, where shall I start? Clearly, deadlifting a gargantuan amount of weight is already a feat in and of itself. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but doing so in a split stance is even more challenging. And doing so while balancing on a skateboard is pretty much suicidal. Add to that attention band trying to pull your head off balance while you are leaning forward is ratcheting up the difficulty level to about 1000. It is hard enough trying to pull this kind of weight from a regular stance. Lord knows I can't do it. Narrowing the stance and then splitting the stance only increases the difficulty in an increasing manner. Adding an unstable surface to the movement makes this process quite unpredictable. The tension band attached to his head provides another perturbing force to the mix, which just gives more to think about while he is trying to perform this feat. As for the muscle groups being involved, the deadlift is primarily a lower body exercise involving the glutes, hamstrings, quadriceps, and core muscles. However, with the weight being pulled, there is also considerable strain on the lats, shoulders, and the muscles of the forearm as well. In fact, friend of mine, master strongman Nick Best, only recently returned to competition one year after suffering a lat tendon avulsion off his humerus while attempting a record deadlift last year. Then, the tension band engages the anterior cervical musculature, including the platysma and sternocleidomastoid, among others and incorporates them in an exercise in which they would not normally be involved. In the lower extremity, the added instability of the skateboard brings into the equation the intrinsic muscles of the feet and the smaller muscles of the lower leg, including those of the anterior, lateral, and posterior compartments. Given the significant weight being balanced, these muscles are certainly working overtime. This is definitely another full body exercise. Again, not one I recommend, mind you, but plainly one that involves just about every muscle that you can name. Which leads me to the utility of this exercise. I won't say that it is useless because you are working really hard here. Screw it, screw it, I cannot do this. This exercise is absolutely useless for the average human being. There is no use for this other than for the amusement of viewers on social media. Whatever use there would be for this athlete is tempered by all of the competing movements that vie for his attention, making each movement inferior than if he had just done them alone. Not to mention the danger of combining all of these movements into one coordinated mess. Normally, it is not 
not uncommon for deadlift athletes to suffer injuries to their legs with muscle strains and tears, their low backs with muscle strains and vertebral disc injuries, and their upper extremities with biceps ruptures and forearm strains. However, here, the instability that has been introduced makes the possibility for more serious injury very, very real. Were the athlete to fall off the skateboard at any time during the lift, his ability to control his landing while holding on to over 600 pounds would be impossible. Ankle dislocations, ligament injuries of the knee, or even fractures of the tibia and fibula are possible. In addition, rupture of the Achilles tendon, the patellar tendon, or the quadricep tendon might also occur. So overall, not much juice for the squeeze and with a ridiculously high injury profile to boot. Um, yeah, no thanks. Wow. Definitely, that's how legends are made. That, like, uh, it may be not a good kind of legend, but definitely, that's how they're made. That's ridiculous. Next up on today's episode of crazy exercises that might make you a quadriplegic, we have the rack weighted Bozu Bulgarian split squat. Awadi ra simado. See him? See him, Aguanso? Why, I hear that. Hear what I say? Hear But seriously, this one is just as bad as the last one. Normally, with a Bulgarian split squat, you are focusing most of the effort on the front leg, engaging the glutes, hamstrings, quadriceps, and core. At the same time, you are activating the lower leg and foot intrinsics to provide single leg stability. Here, with the unstable Bozu ball platform under the front leg, these small muscles are taxed to the extreme. Add in a rowing machine for the rear leg with an entire weight rack balanced on his shoulders. There are additional muscle groups involved, which include the muscles of the low and mid back, the shoulders and the arms. All of these muscles are coordinated to perform the three tasks that are involved in this exercise. Supporting the rack, performing the squat press, and balancing the whole thing on a single unstable leg. It's kind of like an elephant riding the unicycle on a tightrope. Really, really sketchy, but is it effective? Let me say first that this young man is much, much stronger and coordinated than me. But having said that, let's look at the individual components of this compounded, compound, compound movement. Bulgarian split squats are a very effective single leg strengthening exercise. Weighted split squats are even better. However, the unstable platform anteriorly reduces the absolute strength benefit since a lower weight will be tolerable given the instability that has been introduced. The sliding platform posteriorly increases the instability, thereby reducing the overall efficacy of this movement yet again. So in summary, good for TikTok, but not really good for anything else, anything else. As for the potential injury profile, all the same injuries that might result from the slippery skateboard deadlift stunt are equally valid here. But as there is also an entire squat rack supported on his back, more serious injuries to his low, mid, and upper back, as well as his neck might also be possible. This would include the sprains and disc injuries previously mentioned, but possibly also fractures of the spine as well, where he'd fall awkwardly and have the squat rack land on him. Such a fall might also result in fractures of the extremities, both upper and lower as well. A lot of possible risk for little to no benefit. Well, you know, YOLO. How do you do, fellow kids? What? One thing for certain, with the desire for influencers to outdo each other on social media, there is no shortage of extreme exercises to discuss. Let me know what you want me to cover next. As always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho.